those years in Colorado at the fight of the rivalry? Well, you know, in, in all fairness, uh, Chris Draper called me a couple of days ago and he said, you're the first one to cross that bridge. And <laughs> it was such a unique rivalry. I missed, like I told Chris, I said, I missed most of the fighting from the 90s. I was drafted in 98, started playing 99. So we played a few times afterwards in the playoffs, but always was such a special place to play at the Joe and, and the organization was so good and the team was so good, you know, made it, it made it interesting at that time. And certainly was a big arrival then, but I understood uh, at that time, how much pride those guys had the, in the Red Wings organization. And I'm just a part to be glad to be a part of the organization now. Hey, just last one. What excites you about this opportunity? Well, it, it's very interesting it's it's a big challenge and i was looking for an up an opportunity to get myself inside the door of the nhl and had a conversation with different peoples within the hockey circles and and when i started talking with jeff i had a real good interaction with him we we started talking about uh strategies what he was trying what he was looking for uh we share ideas and then had conversation with steve and it was it was a great conversation. I'm very happy to to be a resource now for those guys and, and become a part of their team and, and try to help and, and make this team uh, grow and the young players to be better and, and, and be more effective. And, and I'm just looking forward to uh, working with those guys. I had real good interaction in the meetings with them, and it was um, something that I'm, I'm really thankful that I'm a part of now. Good. So thanks for this, Alex. Thank you. Next up, we'll go to Helene St. James from the Detroit Free Press. Hi, Alex. How do you see yourself kind of impacting this team on, on the power play? Like, have you looked at video as to who plays where or uh, kind of how, how do you see that uh, shaping up? Yeah, we, you know, like through the interaction and the meetings that I had with Jeff, we, we went over some stuff and, and I share my thoughts on some of the things that they did last year and, and what, you know, um, I would, you know, suggest that they, they try in the future and, and stuff like that, talk about different players and, and where they're at in their development. Certainly, I'm going to need to get a little bit more familiar with those players, so we're going to get going probably on that as soon as possible. And then, um, you know, I, I think that for me is just being myself. I've always been a guy that throughout my career, even though um, playing is not coaching experience, which I know I'm somewhat relatively new to coaching, uh, players always have feels that you can't get as a coach. And I've always believed that. And you talk to the brightest mind in the game and they see things on the ice that perhaps coach can't see. And when you've experienced it, you know, you, you've got a different view and a different perspective on certain things. And, and my job is going to be to get familiar with the player, build relationships with them and, and earn their trust in the fact that I'm going to try to get them better and put them in situation to succeed. And, and that's what I've talked with Jeff and, and, and I, I can't wait. You know, we've had conversation with Jeff. We're gonna have some more. I'm curious to see he and the rest of the staff, what they see in the players, what they think are possibilities for them and then get to know the players and, and try to help them as much as possible. Did the interview process also include uh, ch uh, talking with Steve Eisman? Yes. Yeah. What was that uh, kind of conversation like? It, it was very good. Steve is, you know, highly praised in the hockey circle, not only for what he did as a player, but also what he did with the Tampa Bay Lightning organization before joining the Red Wings. And, and certainly it was a good conversation. It was fun. Steve asked me a question about some of the things that I saw and some of my views. And then uh, we exchanged conversation. I asked him certain questions about the team, but it was, you know, it's always fun to pick on the mind of, of one of the brightest in the game. And certainly I consider Steve to be um, extremely gifted in what he does. And, and I'm hoping that, you know, we're going to have conversation and, and, um, and he can still give me advice on, on some of the things that, that uh, we're going to do going forward. This last thing. So you're familiar with most of the alumni in the organization. Do you have history with any of the current players? With the current players? Uh, not really. I, no. I don't know any of the young players you know I've crossed paths with with some of them you know so I would be able to you know have a conversation with them but not really familiar with any of the players I'm more familiar with the alumni and you know you don't have to remind me that next year it's going to be 20 years anniversary of the 2002 so I still remember that it's still very fresh in my mind in a bad way but in, in all all kidding aside 
uh, looking forward to be a part of the organization. There's, there's many great people that works in the organization and, and I'm looking forward to, to join them and, and help them. Thanks very much. Next up, we'll go to Max Bowman from The Athletic. Hey, Alex, you mentioned still being relatively new uh, in coaching. I'm, I'm curious what you learned in those two years in Iowa. Well, you know, like for me, after I retired, so my path after I retired, I, I still, it doesn't mean that your physical ability diminished, that you still don't like the game or it's still not a passion. So I wanted to stay connected, but not, you know, be involved on a day-to-day -day thing. So I, I went out and, and did NHL Network for a few years and worked on TV and stayed connected with the game in that regards. And then from there, um, you know, the competition missed, I missed the competition a little bit. And uh, Tim Army, the coach in Iowa, which I worked for in the last two years, was an assistant coach in Colorado, was a head coach in the AHL and, and said he had a spot available on his staff. So took the job and, and, and ran with it and, and tried to build, you know, my criteria, try to become uh, and, and learn from the coaches I've had in the past, but, you know, be my own self within that, that circle of coaching and um, build relationship, uh, get more familiar with the computer work and how to do things and how to present the players and how to appeal to certain players. And, and I'm still uh, learning in that regards, but, but certainly it's been a good learning process. The AHL is a developmental league. And it's certainly a developmental league for the players, but it's also for the coaches to try different things and, and to try um, to build yourself and in a way that you could become a leader to, to be able to help uh, lead and coach in the NHL. And then having worked with so many young players in, in the AHL, I mean, are you excited that, that the, the group you're going to be coming into does have a lot of those young guys as well? Yeah, I'm, I'm extremely excited. You know, I know I'm familiar with some of the guys that I've seen in, in Grand Rapids playing against uh, Grand Rapids over the course of the last few years. But also, you know, watching games and, and having the interactions with the guys, I'm looking forward to get on the ice with them. I really think that, you know, I, I can have an impact on them on the ice. I, you know, when you have a chance to, to play for, you know, for a long time, you learn things of the trades. I've said it many times in my interview. I said I had many great coaches, but had the luxury of having um, Brian Trottier and Michelle first year in Colorado, who were former players, who were Hall of Famers, you know, that were part of the organization. And every bit of information that they gave me, I just I just took and ran with it because I knew it was it was bulletproof. It had been tried before. It had been something that that they did on the on the ice previously that worked for a player so I think that for for a younger player it's sometimes I'm not saying all the time they're still going to have their doubts but you know most of the times you know it was easier for me then to listen to those guys and, and take advice from these guys because they had done that before so um, that certainly helps my resume helps my interaction with them the fact that I played the game but uh, I think that uh, my first thought is going to be to, to build a relationship with them and know that, you know, my goal and, and the goal that I'm going to try to help with, you know, with Jeff and the rest of the staff is to make one, make them better and make the team better collectively. And then last thing for me, Jeff mentioned that uh, he likes that you can still think the game as a player a little bit, having played so recently. Do you feel, I mean, how much have you felt in the last couple of years? Like I'm thinking this like a player a little bit. Well, you know, that, that was the biggest challenge probably that I had when I got to Iowa was, you know, put in terms where, um, you know, whether it's power play or penalty kills, you know, I had responsibilities over the last couple of years in, in both. And, and, you know, how do I phrase it for them? Because sometimes there's, you know, there's feels as players that you have that you have to be able to translate it for, for them to see it, you know, in video, for them to feel it and, and be able to execute it on the ice. So those were the things that I had to transition to because passing lane, you'll ask, you know, players in the NHL, sometimes they don't need the coaches to see the passing lane. They, they, they feel it on the ice they, they, with their actions on the ice will dictate where the lanes are going to open and certain things. So, um, but having the one-on-one -on -one with the guys and having the conversation as to see what they see and, and see what we can unlock, you know, and, and fulfill their full potential and maybe help them and enhance, you know, parts of their game is, is really going to be a challenge. And it's something that as, as a former players, 
you know, you grow through your experiences. And there's some things that sometimes you can't do physically, but it doesn't mean you can't see it. We all wish, you know, like um, as players, we were Conor McDavid or Sidney Crosby's or Wayne Gretzky's. It doesn't mean you can't, you, you don't see it. It just means that sometimes there's limitation, but where and how good can we get our players to be? Um, certainly, um, I've had some talks with Jeff. I've got some ideas on some of the players and, you know, I'll follow Jeff's guideline with, with some of that stuff, but I'm, I'm very anxious to, to get working with the guys. Thanks, Alex. Welcome to Detroit. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Ansar Khan from MLive. Hi, Alex. Uh, just wondering, uh, have power plays evolved or changed much and just how they're run from the time that you uh, were a player uh, to now? A, a little bit. I would say that, you know, perhaps, you know, the last ever power play probably happened um, right after the last lockout. You know, we the team started using the bumper a little bit. You know, it's starting to, you know, we, we started to see more guys rolling downhill on their onside, which was, you know, highly unlikely, you know, back in the days. Um, teams started using, you know, more of a defenseman in the middle and, and two forward on the side. So I remember, you know, some of the best power plays from the early 2000s, it was a little bit different. So sometimes it would be even two defensemen on the ice and, and the play would revolve mostly on the one side. So there's been more spreading on the ice since the, the last lockout. I don't know if it's anything more than evolution of the game, but um, you know, there's, there's different strategies and, and certainly like I expressed with Jeff and, and Steve, it's just, this is not about reinventing hockey. It's putting players in, in situation to succeed and facilitate for them. And, and certainly we're going to try and, and work different things and, and try to uh, make some adjustment to, to work and, and make the power play better and, and more, um, more consistent. And it's going to be an everyday challenge. You know, when you have young players, certainly it, it takes time. It takes, um, takes them time to simulate that. It takes them, you know, time to put them in a confident frame of mind that every time they go on the ice, they can execute. So certainly um, uh, we're going to get going on that once uh, training camp starts. Thanks.